What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Live Composing Show. This is your host, Stephen Malin, video game composer, and man, oh man, I'm excited for today. If you couldn't tell from the title of today's video, we're going to be writing some 16-bit Sega Genesis music, one of my favorite eras of music, period, mainly because that was my childhood. I'm a 1990 baby, so all things 90s. Uh, are extremely nostalgic for me and super fun. Um, So I have just incredible memories of the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis and the Game Boy. Kind of moving on to that second tier of Nintendo 64. Even at that point, I was like six or seven. So really in those formative years of five and six, um, man, I was exposed to these two consoles, right? Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. And they're quite different. And if you've followed me for any amount of time here on YouTube or taken my courses, um, I do have a video game music course if you want to dive really, really deep into retro consoles and all the the fun hardware and limitations and things. Um, You'll learn that there is a crazy difference between the 16-bit consoles, probably more of a difference than just about any other two consoles of any generation. And right now, I think we're in the ninth generation of video game consoles Depends on if you consider Switch to be 8th or ninth, but um, we have a lot of video game history where early days of hardware were super limiting, and, and all of those old consoles had their own sound chip. They had their own very unique way of programming, and what's happened over time is as we've gotten to more modern consoles, probably around the 2000s or so, really once um, kind of Red Book Audio became mainstream, like wave CD quality became the mainstream in the Xbox and and, um, PlayStation era. Really everything since then has kind of been on the same palette. It's all kind of been the same limitless, whatever you write, you write, whether it's sampled or, or live or whatever. But back in these old days, something so fun about retro VGM for me, going back and learning all of the insanity that composers had to go through to write music. And today is probably the most insane process of any video game console I've ever written for. And today we are authentically writing Sega Genesis music that I could literally export from my Deflamask software today. There's a file export and you can actually turn it into the ROM file, which goes straight to the cartridge. And that's because today we are using coding language. We're literally going to be using Check this thing out. If you've never seen Deflamask, this thing is bonkers. It's all code where you literally go note by note and you plug in all the different data. And there's all these little codes and things that it looks like a spaceship, right? If you've never used this, it's absolutely bonkers. Um, And just for fun, um, while we're kicking off the show here today, if you've never heard of Deflamask, if you've never experienced a tracker such as Fami Tracker, which is famous for NES music and Game Boy music. Deflamask is really, really good at FM synthesis. So I I really don't want to go too deep into the the terminology, but if you're curious, the Super Nintendo 16-bit era, which was like the number one competitor with Sega at the time, the Super Nintendo is sample-based. So what that means is composers would just create sounds or find sounds from random places and they would compress them down to a super small file, throw those into the sample engine, and then they could just play whatever they want on the keyboard, which is why a lot of Super Nintendo music is unique because every single soundtrack, every single game had its own unique set of sounds, which I think is super cool, and that's why I love doing that type of music. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Sega Genesis, which was FM synthesis, which is all synths, it's all samples, not, not even samples, but um, synth wave, synthesis, right? So inside Deflamask, we have this beautiful engine here where you can actually go in and you can create your own FM. Let me just like pull up a random one. You can go in here and you can actually make your own patches. And this is what composers did. They would go through and they would, um, they would blend together four different wave channels to create your own unique sound and there's just infinite possibilities here based on the number of knobs and it's pretty crazy Uh, and that allows you to create your own unique sounds so not one of these sounds is going to sound the same 
but they all have one thing in common. They're FM synthesis, which means they're coming from synthesizers. It, it, they're coming from, I don't want to nerd out too hard here, but it's basically a, a it's going to be very harsh, very tinny, very bright in your face type of sound. And, and instantly for me, it brings back memories of Sonic the Hedgehog, right? And that those three soundtracks, it brings back Mortal Kombat. It brings um, that type of really in your face, grungy type of rock sound versus the Super Nintendo, which was much more fluffy and light and cartoonish and, and, and kind of fam- the f- more family friendly of the two consoles. So um, Sega has a fun history of always trying to, to push the envelope on, on music and Sega Genesis was, was no exception. So within the Sega Genesis, we have six channels. So we can play six sounds at once. But what's also really cool is we can do four. I mean, really, if you really want to like dive into this, we have six FM channels. So that's what these vertical bars are. And then over here we have four I think they're called sine waves, SN, I think that's what it stands for. But the the SN channels, you can also have four of those. And each of those are more of the prehistoric NES type sound or the the Sega Master System, more of a Game Boy type sound. They're the sine waves. So if I go in my um, software here over to one of these channels, it doesn't matter what I have selected as an instrument. It's going to automatically sound like um, that sine wave every single time. See, they all sound identical because sine waves sound the same always. And that is like the retro sound. So what I find fascinating is the Sega Genesis actually blends two styles together. It takes the old school Sega Master System Game Boy type sound, NES type sound with the sine waves over here in this right side. But in the left side, we have five unique channels FM 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 that we can use to create our own custom FM. And then probably the most fascinating channel of all, which this in many ways trumps the Super Nintendo, um, or at least it's different, and that's the FM 6 channel, which can be used for anything. But specifically, it can be used for your own wave samples. This changes everything because this means that even if your music sounds kind of generic, Genesis-esque, When you use the FM6 channel and you import your own WAV files that are downsampled and compressed to the the format, it allows you to do your own drum beats, your own sound effects, your own like vocals, whatever the heck you want to do, which is why in the Sega Genesis, all the sports games, I think of things like um, even in Sonic 3, right? We have the come on whenever Knuckles is on the screen. Um, There are these little vocal bytes that are in the FM6 channel. So, so long as you know how to kind of organize your information, you can write just about anything. And it's pretty crazy what you're able to do. Um, And I'm just so excited. So we're definitely going to dive in here. Um, And if you haven't let me know yet, when you hop into the live chat, uh, tell us all, what is your favorite memory of the Sega Genesis or what's your favorite game, your favorite soundtrack from the Sega Genesis? I think for me, Sonic 2 or Sonic 3, it, it has to be it. Um, and just for fun, as we're kicking off here, um, Deflo Mask is a free software that any of you can grab. It's on Windows, but it's also, you can kind of hack it into, into Mac. You have to run it a very specific way, but it is a free piece of software. They now have a paid version on um, iOS, so you can do it on your tablet as well, but it seems kind of silly that it's free on PC, but you got to pay for it, uh, for the app, but whatever, it's, it's inexpensive. If you'd like to do it on the go, you can do this stuff on the go, which is pretty awesome. Um, and it comes preloaded with several folders of, hello, please open. I might have to do a new file. Uh-oh. Oh, somehow I've already crashed it and I just started. <laughs> Give me two seconds. I'm going to reopen this. And I'm going to let you enjoy uh, when you open up Duffel Mask. It has this really cool opening. Duffel Mask. Come on! So I've written quite a bit in here before. But what I wanted to show you is when you go to the open menu, you can actually open up. Um, demo songs that the creators have already made for us, which is pretty awesome. So if you have no idea what you're doing and you'd rather edit something or just kind of get a feel for it, then you can go into this folder 
which I think is super cool. There we go. Um, you go to the demo songs and you can kind of hear some examples. So for example, here's some of the ones that I think are just absolutely stellar and give us a really strong sense of what we can do with the software. Aquatic Ambience, which is funny because that's from Donkey Kong Country, which is a Super Nintendo. But just take a listen to what's possible um, in the Sega Genesis. <laughs> So good so nostalgic um i mean there are so many good examples here um let me pick on another one i want to find from shovel knight so they these are just kind of covers they're not the or the originals but um where is it one of these shovel knight yeah yeah mole knight stage an idea for oh my gosh this music is insane so good so unique this stuff like inspires me for days um so we pick on another one i'll probably land here for today so we're talking about sonic right um i don't know how to not write like sonic when i do sega genesis music because that is a sound that that is part of part of my identity um it's part of not only my my video game history and what i was influenced as a kid, but also my musical sound. Um, I love Sonic music. I've done Sonic piano covers, and I, I just love this. It's a very pop slash video game Japanese sound, uh, almost a J-pop sound uh, for for obvious reasons. Because uh, the composer was I forgot what band he was in, but uh, he was the keyboardist for a famous Japanese band, and that was the whole point: is to get that kind of really cool sound. And if you remember the ads from the Genesis days, man, it was uh, all about. Sega does what Nintendo don't, right? It was all about like taking jabs at Nintendo and like we're the cool console for the cool kid, for the older crowd, mature crowd. Um, so to me, it makes the most sense for today since I'm not super, super talented at the programming side, but I like to take a demo song and then erase the data, but at least start with the sounds and then kind of tweak them as I need. That way I have some kind of starting point and I'm not it's not a complete blank canvas and I'm not spending hours trying to like make a sound. Right. Um, I think it's a good way with any, any DAW. Like if you really don't know what you're doing, try to start with a template and work your way backwards. So to me, choosing a Sonic example is just the perfect idea. So let's pick on green Hill zone. <laughs> so good ah, it's so good so i think it gives us a really great starting point for today and my goal today aside from just having fun with the software and writing sega genesis music which is fun in itself i want to write something that mimics sonic 
platforming, right? But also has a very strong sense of me and, and has my sonic fingerprint, <laughs> sonic identity um, on it as well. And I think that's that's a great goal for any composer is find what you like and then make it your own. You don't have to start from scratch. Use what you like and use what has been highly successful, right? Um, and if you've been watching my YouTube channel for a while, I actually have a retro VGM playlist where I've been doing these live streams and one console at a time, dipping my toes in all of the retro consoles and, and trying to write something that's authentic to that era, authentic to that sound. And that's an ongoing SoundCloud playlist for me now. And it's part of how I get more gigs is presenting that to potential game developers when they say, hey, can you write in the style of blank, Nintendo DS, Game Boy, Super Nintendo, N64, PlayStation, GameCube. Yes, yes, I can. Here you go. Here's an, a real authentic example of what I've done. Um, and, and just the viability of this, um, just to kind of throw this out there, and then we'll, we'll write some music, I promise. Um, a few years back, uh, my buddy Matt Kenyon, um, who, funny enough, he said he'd be here for this stream at some point, so maybe he'll pop in. I love Matt Kenyon. Um, he's a fantastic composer, fantastic educator in the music space for games. Um once upon a time, uh, he and I collaborated on a game called um, Siberian Time Traveling Warrior, which if you haven't played that game, it's a really fun 2D brawler um, action game and super fun. Uh, it's like a little ripped barbarian dude who goes around and, and beating. It's kind of like Tiny Barbarian if you've played that game. Um, super fun side scroller and uh, it's on all the major platforms, Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, get, get it somewhere. Um but the music, it's primarily Matt, and I just did a few bonus tracks in there, but we both decided to use Deflamask, this exact software, to write Sega Genesis music. Um, maybe just for fun. Let me see if I still have it. Um, I wasn't planning to do this, but... Um, why not, right? It's, I mean, I have all my files, and this stuff loads so fast. Would that be interesting for you guys to hear? Um, what the final tracks were. Uh, let me grab that. Um, just to show you like what this software can do. And I was super happy with these. Uh, I wrote I wrote several. Um, only two were used in the final game. So here's like level two. And I forgot, I completely forgot what that was going to sound like. I haven't heard that in years since I wrote it. Um, that's a cool track. And man, I, this just makes me so pumped up to write more of this style because the software is so cool because I know it's limiting. And the, the great question that every composer has is, okay, in this day and age, should I write in a tracker or should I write in a DAW, like Cubase, Pro Tools, Logic? And I just think it depends on your how you want to be creatively inspired. I love writing in the DAW and it's quick and efficient and you can use MIDI and all that stuff, but something about writing the tracker that is so limiting that it forces you to play by the rules because if you play two notes at the same time um, in two different channels and you've used all your channels, it won't sound like the note will not happen. And you have all these like just really, really simple limitations that force you to write good music like you have to have a good melody you have to have a good drum beat you have to have a good bass line and at the end of the day those are the things that are catchy and interesting and it kind of it just forces you to use these really funky effects of like the delays and the all the things right um and it just kind of naturally lends itself to this looping structure because you all you have your matrix up here which is how you do all your loops so interesting this is like such a weird blend of different it's like ableton live meets logic 
but you can only use six sounds <laughs> and you can't record MIDI. It, it's really fascinating. So all that to say, you know, if this is interesting for you, I do have a VGM course on Udemy. Um, if you just go to my site, stevenmalin.com, I have all my courses there and you can check them out. But um, for the rest of you who just want to enjoy the show, let's write some Sega Genesis music. Um, and I'm going to go back to my Sonic track as a template because I freaking love these sounds. I love these sounds so much. And what I'm going to do is to get started, I'm going to delete everything. So in Devil Mask Land, you hit spacebar and it enters the edit mode and you can select whatever you want. And you can literally just hit backspace or hit delete and it'll get rid of everything. Another quick way is I can actually go here and delete all the matrices, all the matrices. And that way, I know there's a ton in this particular track. Um, and now it's just a blank canvas. But the, the beauty is that now it's, let me uh, open up my other folder so I can save it. But the, the beauty is now it's a template, right? I'm not starting from complete scratch. There we go. So now I can just have fun, write some music. And be warned, I'm a little slow this type of writing. I think this type of writing forces you to write slower because you have to think a little bit more about your rhythms and that kind of thing. Um, but the first thing I want to make sure before I write a note is that I'm happy with the speed. This is a very important uh, little toggle because you can't change it later without butchering your entire track. So right here, speed, this just determines your tempo, which if you look in the bottom right hand corner is way down here. So it says 150 BPM. If I wanted to change it, I would just go over here and change my speed. And it's based on a, on a formula, so you can just kind of play with it until you get what you want. Um, and I also want to change, you can change the bass time. You can change the number of rows. They're going to be in a, like a sheet here. And then you can change the number of steps, meaning whenever I input a note, how many columns is it going to jump every single time I play. So that's kind of the difference between eighth notes, 16th notes, 32nd notes. So for me, I feel like the bass value needs to be a 16th note. That way, if I want to speed it up or slow down, I have a lot more flexibility. So let me just do a quick little test. Um, okay, so that's super fast. Uh, but I do want to keep this in line with all the Sonic stuff. So I'm pretty sure that they were doing a bass that was a step of four, which would be an eighth note instead of sixteenths. So let me grab a bass. So this is how I would get all this set up before I actually write music. I just want to make sure that I have enough rows. So we have C, 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 C. Da, da, da. Oops, I need one more. Okay, that's a good amount. And you can also do uh, basic Windows commands like Control All, you know, Control A. You can select everything, delete them all. Like that. I get the concept right so let's see what else we have to play with just before i edit anything i just want to kind of get a feel of the lay of the land such a good patch
what an iconic sound. It's like a woodwind instrument, like a flute almost. So good. So I feel like I want to keep this in major land because I have a tendency to write darker things. And while that would sound cool, like a Castlevania type thing, I really want to keep it more in the fun platformer side. It's maybe in the bass. doing like, a, like an E7. That's pretty cool. I mean, if you think about it, Sonic has a very bluesy sound anyway. But it kind of stays in a major key, which is fascinating. It's this really fun blend of a lot of styles, which I love. Um, so now it's all for me, the challenge is figuring out how to notate that bum, da, bum, ba, dum. and I really don't even know how to do swing except 16th notes. I like that a lot. So, dun, 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 ba -dum, boom, 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 ba -dum. figure out how the heck to notate that. I mean, this is the part that scares me, but you just got to think in eighth notes or sixteenth notes. So, one, two, three, boom, dun, boom, boom, boom. And this is where my steps are going to screw me up. So, I'm going to put it back on step of one. <clears throat> dun. Um, so, the question is I think I'm going to change the speed. I'm going to cut it in half because the sonic track. Dun, 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 da, da, dun, da, 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 da. That is 150, but I'm trying to decide. Da, 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 da. I think I'd rather do 75, so I don't have to do so many 30 second notes. So let me goof with that for a second. Oh, there it is. All I had to do was do the bass time of two. So now my steps will make more sense to my brain, like this. So now, theoretically, every time I hit down, See, da, 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 da. This is tricky. It's like when I once I get that funky bass, I'll know what to do. One, two, three, bop. Another way that you can do it, um, it won't be perfect, but you can actually, you can record live, which that might save my butt a little bit. And I think perhaps the best way to do that is to go ahead and get a drum beat. It's like, um, this just so I have some kind of metronome because there's no metronome there's no click track you have to make your own that way I can kind of understand sonically I don't know what I do wrong oh there's a button for that oh I forgot what the button is this is where you can go to your friends go to your like past tracks to figure this out there's a code for everything, so I need to go back and figure this out real quick. Um, give me a second to get some windows open over here on my um, other screen. That way I don't have to bore you guys with codes. But what I need is... I'm going to open up that last track, the Siberian one. Because in here... 
this isn't a software that you can like import codes from another thing, but there's a code you to type in. I think it's, um, it's one of these. So 7F is the volume level, but I think I have to type in the code for the, let me just do that for FM6. I'm a little out of touch here. But thankfully I can switch very, very simply like that. Maybe I have to tell it to do six. I mean, that's a cool, <laughs> it's a cool sound, but it's not what I want. <laughs> Seventeen oh one, I think. I hope to not fail too hard for you guys today. Is it seventeen oh one? There's just different codes that tell the the internal engine what to to load. There it was. So I have to type in seventeen oh one to to tell FM six to turn from a normal FM channel into the samples channel. That's what that that code means. And there's a whole list of codes on the Defamax website if you care. But I had to tell the machine to trigger the sample for the session. But that's gonna be my metronome. And I think I'm gonna just put the... Um, yes, I'm going super old school today. But the result's gonna speak for itself. It's gonna be very authentic. Another a much quicker way of doing this, I should have just done it this way, is I can actually even copy and paste anything, which is super handy, and in some ways better than MIDI, because I can do this. Just copy and paste a bunch of times, which might look super weird, but see. So now the question is, do I speed it up or slow it down? I like that better. So I'm going to go back to my original idea. See how that's a much faster way to get all those weird rhythms in there. Something like that. So let's figure out what I want. Let me save it before I lose all my progress. Right? Bass matters. Cool, let's play it. So I'll do two passes. And I can already tell that I'm gonna want two of these. So I'm going to copy. And you can decide which um, phrase you want, which is super interesting. So if we call the base, which we're calling FM1, phrase zero, then the next one's gonna be phrase one. That way I can have two separate things. Meanwhile, the um, drum beat just kind of continues. Now I'm gonna change that because it's not, I don't love it. Here we go. So now I just need to go through and make sure that everything's landing where it should. So you can do that quite simply with the insert key 
or the delete key, you can take away, I'm sorry, I said that wrong, the insert or the backspace. You can actually go through and you can move one, whatever you call it, like you can nudge it, you can nudge everything, right? So if something feels off, I can just go through. Just go through here. It's painstaking, but you gotta do it. It's not MIDI, <laughs> it takes longer. So, yum, dun, dun, dun. Da da da. So, if you take one, if you add one, you got to take one away. It's kind of the name of the game here. Da, da, da. I think I'm trying to do triplets. Dun, dun, da. Yum, ba, dun, da, da, da. Boom. of um I like that but in order to make that happen I have to add to copy some things so over here fm6 is my drum beat so we're going to do it four times but the bass line is going to go zero one zero one and then fm2 is going to kind of be its own thing so it's going to be zero one two three that way, each of these four is its own unique thing. Let's go back to the top. So, here we go. Now I can also, if I don't want to delete stuff, I can literally copy and paste or cut and paste, which is another great technique. It's like there. I'll just do the delete. There. So, uh, Corey said in the chat, uh, the fact that it's, uh, that's broken up by ambiguous units of time is killing me. So it's not ambiguous. It's just, it's what I want it to be. So this, these can be 16ths, 30 seconds, eighths, quarters, whatever. It's just, it's all how I mentally am treating it. So I'm treating every, uh, so the zero would be the downbeat, beat one, or beat one, 
beat two would be the four, beat three would be the eight, beat four would be the 12. So in that amount of time, I'm just trying to numerically divide it up into four quarter notes. Um, and you can kind of see it right here. One, two, three, four. So that'd be one bar of four, four time because it's a kick, snare, kick, snare. Boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop. I said that wrong. So 32, so I am doing 30 second notes, right? So one bar is 32 columns because that's 32, 30 second notes. But that allows me to write 30 second notes of speed if I wanted to. So for fun, I want to whip out the Deflo Mask chart. Um, that way, it's like the effects chart, which I should be in the manual. We have a really, really thorough manual. Do, 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 do. Which I'm looking up right now. I used to have a shortcut to it when I was doing a lot of this stuff. Um, Sego Genesis. And they have a lot of consoles that you can do, actually. So I'm typing in Sega Genesis. Here we go. The Defla Mask Wiki. Perfect. Um, so here we go. Do -do -do -do. Here's the page. If anyone cares, I mean, this is like two of you might actually care. Um, but there it is. Um, you can actually look at, okay, Sega Master System or Sega Genesis using that chip. These are the different commands you can use to change stuff up. And they have global commands as well, standard effects like right here. So this is really what we're gonna be using. Um, so what I wanna do is take this and do something interesting with it. Something like that. And what I might do, since I've already done this before, I might just open up Siberian. Oops. Man, I'm clicking all the wrong things. Whoops. Something like that. Like I really like uh, these different effects. Like even this, this is pretty awesome. This is literally taking the noise channel and turning it into a, a snare hit, or like a, a, a crash. So I might steal that over here. So, so like one, two, three, four, right there. But then you gotta turn it off with, I think F, like zero F, zero volume. Yikes. This is where you gotta know, you gotta know your key commands. So this is F. Um, okay, cool. So if you use the zero, that's what makes it turn off. So I'll just put the zero where I want it, which is gonna be here. And if you want volume to trigger, then I think it's seven F or just an F. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. It sounds like a racing game now. Um, you can also choose different numbers. or letters rather, I think it's like C. Yeah, so A, B, C, D, E, F are the the volume levels. So A would be the softest, F is the loudest, so pick something in between, it's so like E. That sounds like something like from, um, oh, what's it called? 
F zero, right? It's like this random mechanical sound effects in the background. That's how you make that stuff. I wasn't even expecting to use this drum beat, but since we are, I am gonna make two versions of it. <clears throat> So I'm gonna make a zero and a one, zero and a one. So the one, I'm going to, maybe not, let me, let me experiment. I wanna make a um, snare hits that are double. So it'll be right here. Oops. Is this fun for you guys? I hope so. It's different. So there you go. There at the bottom of the, um, of that first pad, I'm gonna go two snares. insert some new things so we're just gonna straight up make this um, probably start a new beat so it's gonna be one like this so I'm just making these all zero so it stays the same make this a one um, so yeah I just want to kind of make some brand new stiff that way it's all fresh then this next section uh, I know I'm just totally spitballing here but I think I'm, I'm hitting the goal so far of staying in that lane there we go um, so, so far we've kind of hovered on this this e7 <laughs> just modulating the whole thing, right? It's a B major. And I might go back and, and edit the bass line to fit that a little bit more closely, but... So, just so I have a beat, let me do this a couple times. It's all about the numbers. So I want the bass line to, to be a two and then a three, like this. Undoing is kind of hard. <laughs> you have to like literally go back and undo everything, every single note you put in. Okay, so we're here. Why do I already have stuff? There we go. It's a little dangerous recording, but.
So it looks like we're going to do, let's fix it first and then we can copy it. We're going to do copy, copy. So two, three, two, three. This is where I have to get a little meticulous. That's the name of the game. You gotta be willing to um, take some time. All right, I like that. So I'm actually gonna copy all of this. Go back to number two delete those because my, my rhythms are bad. Paste it, but then change the notes. You can type on your keyboard too, it's pretty cool. E -e -e. How's this? Let's do an A major chord. Yeah, A major. Oops. Yeah, you can absolutely put every note in manual if you want. Sounds like a pain to me. Da da da. Crap. I'm over here butchering. All right. Yum bum bum. There it is. Hey, what's up, John Bartman from the How I Make Music podcast. Fantastic show. If anyone wants to learn about all the crazy inner workings of the composers of all these different shows. still off right here and there's no way of like perfectly quantizing or anything you just gotta do by ear and by lines oh this is my it's supposed to be an e we'll make it an e dash one sneak in there this is a there we go uh john this is called def la masque it's a french name so of the mask like music mask music whatever whatever that french translation is here's the mask and we're making retro vgm and the coolest part is i can go if i'm done with this i can go to file save rom i can literally export this sucker into a Sega Genesis cartridge because it's just program language that you then put straight into the, the game and it'll load it because of the system.
infinite possibilities. <laughs> Let's play around, shall we? See what happens when you play too many channels? The system explodes. It's like trying to figure out which one do you mean because it cannot handle more than the three channel polyphony. Isn't that crazy? free software. I love this so much because it forces these crazy artifacts, which will show up in the real game if you actually write it like that. So cool. And that's just playing with the sound wave, the sine waves. But there's so much you can do with this, it's crazy. Ooh, that's a way better bass. So if I want to switch my instruments at any point, I can go over to the actual number. I can delete them all and just replace it with a six. And then just make sure that the threes don't appear again. And unfortunately they do because I hand played them all in, but that's my fault for playing them in. Um, but you can just delete, because you can change channels on the fly. There we go. So now if we go back to the beginning, it's now using number six instead of number three bass, which is a better bass, I think. So here's one of the problems. Um, notes don't just stop on their own. They play forever until you type in a zero. So you have to actually manually put in your own rests, which is why the slap bass is really not slapping. It's actually just tricking. So you can either change the sample itself which I can do right here. I can take the base. Let me just go ahead and call this, um, just call it base. Call it base. Um, but I can go here, I can go to the release. I can make the sustain super low. And the decay. worry about it, it not cutting off because now it naturally will. I'm going to change the volume as well now that I screwed with the sample. I think it's um, trying to figure out where I do it. I think I do it over here. Man, I'm such a dummy with the coding part. There it is, 7F.
economy. Um, so now let's go back to the top. This is fun. We have a bass. By the way, for anyone that, that wants to add this to their life, um, yes, the current version costs 10 bucks, which is nothing. Uh, but if you want the free version, just go to the legacy versions. I haven't upgraded in like five years um, because I, uh, what are they going to do? Add more features to something that doesn't need more features? I don't know. Um, I'm sure there's probably some super useful feature that I'm missing. Generally, with DAWs and, and trackers and stuff, I just, you know, if you get comfortable with one version, don't upgrade unless you absolutely have to because um, you get used to it and you learn the workflow and stuff. But anyway, it is free if you go find the legacy version, which I think they still support on their site. Totally worth a donation, at least. Add something fun like that that's very energetic. In video game music, you should try to avoid that super high octave because that's where sound effects exist. I've actually been asked in my career to not write in that range because sometimes if that happens, it does conflict with the, the sound effects. Okay, I got to really beef up that melody. It's super weak. So let me do this. Uh, let me actually copy. It's going to be a really big copy. I'm going to go 0, 1... To, I don't know if it's going to let me. Is it going to let me copy all of that? I hope. Oh, good. It is. It's all selected. Then I'm going to go over here to FM3 and just paste. Be identical. Or maybe it's not. I thought I really could do it. I stand corrected. Okay. Maybe it's because FM... I, I get it now. FM3 needs to follow the same pattern. So let me do the same pattern. Now, if I paste it, what happens? Still, still the last one, darn. Oh well, it's okay, it's okay. Breathe. This is archaic software. It's not gonna do everything I want it to do. Unless probably I buy the, <laughs> unless I buy the most recent version, mm -hmm. then it probably is gonna work, right? And notice I'm only copying the notes. I'm not copying the, effect which essentially is the patch which patch to play because i don't want it to play the same patch i want to choose a different one all i'm doing is trying to double this with a different instrument so let's pick on i don't know whatever number one is which sounds almost the same i like that a lot 
And by the way, you can mute channels by doing that. You should be able to. I feel like it's stuck. Oh, this is called zero, not one. This is number zero. There. Oh, there's an instance of keeping the twos. I did it's an octave off too. What's all this information? Oh, I have the um, volume seven F. That's weird. So this is uh, this is just troubleshooting nonstop. I'll tell you what. Now, right, so this is the next section where I went to the B major. Okay, now I get it. FM three needs to be something brand new. So it needs to be four, five, six, seven, and I will do the same thing over here, so that I can make a new melody, and not end up duplicating something from a previous section. That's the whole idea, right? And we want to make sure that these guys have something new as well. So just for like my brain, I'm just going to make them all twos. Uh, does that work? One, two, three, four. So this five, four, this is just a, a mess and a half, but this is, this is how you do it, man. It's all programming language. It's all numbers. This is why MIDI exists because this is stupid. But it's also kind of fun. <laughs> How about that? Is that better? Thanks, John. I can always change my mic settings. There we go. Sorry about that. More than happy to adjust that. All right, so this is a bell. Let's call it bell. So we know what the heck it is. This one is like a, a some kind of synth lead. Think we're in business guys let's listen well we were in business until i decided there's no drum beats let's get a drum beat happening this is new stuff we have to go back to samples that's the beat i want like this So the way to do this, uh, I'm on FM synth. I'm not stressed. This is just, it's kind of newer territory. So it's like, it's frustrating when something doesn't happen the way I want it to. So this is, we're on slot number four. Just gotta go, you gotta slow down. It's so easy to go fast. So what I want is boom, like that. So really this could all be one. So, let me slow down. Cool. This is going to be... Matt Kenyon is in the house, everybody. No pressure. The Genesis King himself about to laugh me out of the room. I used your name in vain earlier. I talked a little bit about Siberian. Just like how I how you and I both used Deathly Mask to great effect. You more than me. Alright, cool. It's weird because I haven't used it in a few years and <laughs> It's just hard getting back into it. But I think I'm getting it. So this one just needs to move. It's not exactly a super intuitive <laughs> program. That's okay. Uh, is that what I wanted? 
so it's gonna be eighth notes or sixteenth notes rather. So this is gonna be a C sharp, C sharp, I think. So this guy's gotta move. Half the battle is just like trying stuff. that drum beat um, but remember I just used it originally as like a template to get some kind of <laughs> something right so let me go back to my samples <laughs> Yeah, it's a fun sonicy snare. Um. Part of this kind of music is like, it's not annoying. It is annoying, but you gotta make it fun. Really the trick is to ride that line between, is this annoying or is this like fun and entertaining, you know? Because if, if it's annoying, then you're, you're not doing it right. See you, John, thanks for hanging out. Well, the good thing is we have a bass and we have a, we have a drum beat. So that's, I might just keep my little, <laughs> even though it's annoying. I think what's bothering me is the bell sound. So let's adjust it. It doesn't take much to go in here and just play around with it, right? The synth is just like whiny. So what I might do is, is flip this with the um, instrument four. Let's see what happens. But then it doesn't have that same like punch in the face. instrument okay like it's not changing at all so let me do this uh, let me just solo it the best I can I must not be on the right instrument oh this whole time uh Sorry. 
Dang it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. You can also play with the algorithms, which is pretty cool. You can change the order of the synths. That's cooler. Cool. So now it has more of a fade in. And it doesn't stay alive as long. It might blend better with this one. Cool. <laughs> Who knows if that's going to work or not. All right, let's put some volumes on these. It's actually more interesting. So I'll call this um, synth marimba, or just marimba. That's what it sounds like to me. It actually sounds like xylophone. Cool, that was a nice mistake so we'll do that up here we're gonna call it fm4 one two three let's go to the top lock and load this is gonna be fun Necessary, so I'm gonna. <laughs> That's like a thousand notes I have to delete. I don't even know if I can. Oh lordy. That's cool. And hey, thanks. Thanks for supporting me in this rough time of trying to compose Sega music, which is is so much fun. But man, this is like a headache to the extreme with all the coding. But it sure does make some interesting results. All right, this one, I'm just going to do step because it's just going to make more sense. Here we go. See how fast that was? Cool. And then we'll just go back to the whole zero thing. Go back to the top and I can tell it what volume to be. So let's do 7F as the max. Now this beat, it loses all the energy. So we got to but let's do it. Boom, bum, boom, bum, boom, bum. 
That's the beat. think that one through. There it is. one so that just means that whatever this is it's gonna be four different ideas oops the grand oops there we go wrong channel Errors never cease. Man, <laughs> it's so tricky writing in this. It's a great challenge, though. This is actually great fun for me. Hope it's fun for you, too. Whoever's still sticking around, the saints who are still supporting this insanity. around ever so slightly. Uh oh, what happened? No, stop, stop breaking. Alright. So you go here. I'm gonna turn this way down. Probably make this a C. Nah, let's go with D. Okay, back 
it's a D. What's up, Matt? Welcome to the party. And all the insanity that hath ensueth. Curious how it keeps uh, restarting the pitch. I don't know why it does that. It's like... Dum bum bum. Muted. Weird. And then we'll... No, no, no. I wanted to scoop. So, let's do an epic pitch slide. Portamento down. O2XX. So let's find the pitch that we want to start the scoop. And then we type in, I forgot where to put it, but I think it's here. O2, and then X, X is the um, number, like the amount. So let's say 29. But why has the sound stopped? It's very strange. That's cool. No, I don't know. So it probably scooped too fast. Let's try it. It's like one. That's so cool. So I like it, but what I'm going to do is let the note hang for a second. Da -da -na. Like that. And then we'll cut the note off like right before the end with a zero. <laughs> yeah, baby. All right, that was cool. That turned out way cooler than I thought it would. And I'll cut the note off like right towards the end. But wait, there's more insanity. So in Sega Genesis land for anyone who's still listening and watching and you know you guys rock for, for tr trusting that I could make something decent today um, the cool thing about re retro hardware is there are such extreme limitations but if you get creative you can use all these unused channels and do really interesting stuff so for example reverb does not exist delay does not exist in this environment so you have to manually create your own delay which is super fun. So it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the information into another channel and then I'm going to offset it using the insert or the delete keys. That way it's it's going to um, do some pretty cool stuff. The first thing I need to figure out is panning. So I can pan by using the 08XX code. So the first thing first is I want to Take the melody, I want to pan it left, because what I want is the delay. I'm gonna create a delay, left, right, left, right, left, right. And it's gonna be really, really weird and cool. So let me type in panning for this section only. Panning is gonna be 08. Um, I don't know what the numbers mean, XX, I'm guessing means 
the number value. So I'm guessing zero is left and 99 is right. Let's see if that's accurate. That is not accurate. Seems very wrong. Let's jump to panning and see what happens. Okay, it is possible on the mast. Oh, Genesis Mega Drive. Okay, okay, I understand it now. And this is where the wiki thing really comes into play. Just like read up on your codes. So it says right here for the Genesis Mega Drive, only zero and one can be used here. Left channel only, right channel, both channels. So I need to type in 0801. That's why I didn't do anything. 0801 should be all left. That does not sound like left. 08, right channel only, both channels, 08, 11. Let me just kind of play with this for a second. I hear no change. Do you guys hear any change? I wonder if that's not possible with the this channel. Okay. Maybe I, I can experiment for a second by doing this. First things first, I need to go, I'm, I'm gonna use two and three for my experiment here today. So I'm gonna go four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna copy all of my info. Let's just cut it this way. And then I'm just gonna keep doing this, as annoying as this is. And it's annoying. Doing it so manually, but that's just, that's the world this lives in. Everything's manual. You'll see what I'm doing in a second. So I'm copying all of the stuff I just did in that sign channel. I'm gonna pop it over to an actual FM synthesis to see if that makes a difference in the coding of the panning, because I need to know if this works. And currently, it's not doing anything. Cool. Cool idea, by the way. I'll get to that. All right, so Matt has a fantastic idea, and he is not a backseat composer. That's why I do these streams to get suggestions and ideas from you guys. But he wants to see what it would sound like if I add vibrato to that to that uh, portamento. So let me see what the code is for that. Um, vibrato is 04xy. 04 speed depth. 04xy. That sounds very interesting. So we are to right. We want it to do that. So 04. Let's do like a sensible 20. Let's not be sensible. Oh zero. So it needs to be like 25. <laughs> that sounds funny. How about 99. Okay, that's actually really fun. Good job, Matt, you win. 66, somewhere in the middle. This is getting fun. Okay, look, I hear the channel now. This is left, I think. Did we do it correctly? Yes. So that only applies to those channels, got it. Now I am gonna change the patch because that's totally the wrong patch. I want five. Oh, I like that a lot. I just have to get rid of all my fours, which is the wrong instrument. Cool. And now I'm gonna find a way to increase the volume 
which is really just the, the timbre of number five. So we'll call this. Ah, hey, what's up, Chew? Welcome to the party. Welcome to the madness. Synth lead two. So this, we just need to make sure it has a little bit more of a bite to it. <laughs> cool idea, Matt. That works really well. So now the fun is doubling everything. So I'm literally just gonna copy and paste into my next channel. But first things first, I'm gonna change the panning to be one zero. Oops, wait, uh, zero one, which is right channel only. And we're gonna change the patch maybe to the bell. Yeah. But we're gonna be fancier than that. We're actually going to um, offset everything by um, an eighth note. Let's see what that does. Oof. Maybe it doesn't do anything cool after all. <laughs> stupid now. Come on, how do I? There we go. At least I got the channels set. And maybe I can still double it with the sine waves and do some kind of echo. Yeah, this coding thing is bananas. I can use that over here. It's the most sonic thing ever. I like the idea. I just need to get it in the right spot. This doesn't turn into a complete mess. So what I'm trying to do is use channel five, which is the only one that's not being used at the moment, which is here, channel five, and I need each of these to be different. So one, two, three, just to give me some space to do that cool little descending line. And the patch I wanna use, we're already using two, zero, and one, so let's use five so we don't sustain or that moves to release that's what's happening that's a cool sound I like that here we go cool 
This needs to be four, five, six, seven. Cool. Now I just gotta get these in place. Shouldn't be too hard. This stuff is meticulous, but it's fun. stop it right about here so that it can connect to the next section Looks like this whole set was erased from this channel. That's the riff from Luigi's Raceway from Mario Kart 64, right? This one. Um. Whatever. I 
might be kind of a cool effect in the background. Like that. That fades out. Uh, let me see what kind of effects I can use. Here. There's some cool stuff you can do. Um, so these like the generic ones right here. not sounding okay so it sounds like I need to do zero one two three like normal this is the part that drives me crazy but it makes good sense why they have to do this coding system again now that I know what the heck I'm playing So this sound, let's see what we can do to turn it off here. So I'm trying to create like a arpeggio type of effect. Yeah, that was pretty accurate. Kind of like rings, I guess, for playing Sonic or whatever, coins, or just Mario. What I want to do is offset it. Firstly, by the octave. Blum, blum. Let's first see what it sounds like if we insert. Some space right here. Insert, insert, like this. <laughs> it's kind of cool. pretty effective. Oh man, what did I do? Okay, so here we want zero. Oh my gosh, I screwed this up so bad. There we go. Um, zero, one, one, zero. I feel like I'm <laughs> binary code.
good news is it's a good melody. It's a good simple chord progression. So there's a lot you could do with it. What I don't want to do is overload it with too much. And as fun as these little things are, I'm, I'm just going to move on. Otherwise, it's just going to get stuck with those coin noises, which they're cool, but it doesn't really, it's not, not effective for this kind of music. But it definitely sounds like a race, something racing, which that's what Sonic is. That's what Mario Kart is. So I think we're hitting the vibe for sure. So what I think what I want to do here is I want to insert something new. Actually, I, let me just copy. Copy is faster. Let me copy. And I want just a bar of bass. Um, let me see what it sounds like. So I want two and three to be gone. Like this. Like, let's just start with... None of the the extras. And we can copy this and have two bars, basically like two cycles of intro. You know, we just start the level. And that'd be a cool spot to put like some kind of swoop. Boom. Right? Maybe I'll just borrow from this doing the two and the three we can do it back here we'll just call it b Boo. right here and we'll actually just start the uh the, the descent on the note that way it doesn't the note doesn't matter all right so here it is oh come on why does it not do anything do Mask. Ooh, that makes me seasick. So I'm guessing this has to be normal to like undo all the junk we did here oh my gosh this up it's one of those moments where I just don't even know what I'm doing anymore maybe I'll just do this instead pop it in one of these still do the the 
sent. But I don't know why it's not playing anything. I got the scoop to start. Hooray. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. I think I finally figured it out. So that's going to be three, two, and three. Yeah. You're totally right that you got to get that zero in there to, to make the scoop stop. So I'll make it stop right there. <laughs> I want it to be way more dramatic than that. So let's do this. If that's the left, actually um, the painting doesn't do anything with the sign channels I learned. So let me do this. Let me do like a fifth above or something. about like any programming is if you have one line of code that's off then the whole thing doesn't work isn't that frustrating <laughs> so that'll be two three same thing three three two three and the more complex this gets the more room for error there is <laughs> Okay, so far so good. It's not doing the scoop. So why are we not scooping? I don't know. But just for good measure, I'm gonna pop some stuff over here. Hey, thanks for the sub. Maybe I'll just do like three and four. <laughs> Very annoying. That's kind of funny. works if it's scooped so let me double check one more time my scoopity scoops my port oh it's portamento is two this whole time i'm such a dingus oh two oh two there we go oh. <laughs> that's pretty fun we'll do like 17 it's all by experimenting <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> and then somehow wait to get back to normal. I guess get the um, O two zero zero to stop the scoop. Oh. 
But then four and five are like forever screwed up now. Okay, so this is four and five. are actually shaping up here. Now I'm gonna make this a, a D. Oops. 7D. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is actually a track now. So let's finish it up with some little ornaments and call it a day. So for starters, I think down here, I would really like to copy this. Copied the wrong one. That was kind of cool with the baseline. I'm going to do this. It's going to take a minute, but it'll be worth it. Okay. So we're going to follow the same structure. This is SN1. This is going to be three, four, Three, four, five, six, five, six. So let's go back. Uh, I've already messed it up. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, which is A. Okay. It's getting so complicated, but that's okay. Here. Okay, so I'm gonna copy FM2 to here. And then we're gonna do FM2 to here. FM2. to here. All right, here's what it sounds like. There's like a instant octave button. There is an octave button. Is that will that apply here? I wonder. Doubt it. I like having that extra sine wave on top of the melody. 
Makes me wonder if I should put it lower. Nah, let's keep it. Some vibrato would help make this not so annoying. So let me experiment. Um, let me look at the thingy. Vibrato is four. So we'll do four. I don't know. Twenty-two. Fifty-five. terrible. Oh, you're you're legendary. Mr. Matt. Let's see. One, two, three, boom. Let's see what that feels like. He just gave me the keys to life. He said control F three is octave down. Oh, that's glorious. That's amazing. Thanks, dude. Contr I did not know that. F3, cool. Oh, is that everything? Oh, crap. That's everything. That's not. Oh, no, no, no. It's just my selection. So I need to be careful that my selection is accurate. There it is. Cool. That's such a good key command. All right, I think we're done, but I wanted to make sure this little xylophone thing gets some action in this other part too, which is here. So it's gonna be I don't know, two for each of them. We'll just do some more step sequences really quick. So the... This will be really easy. I do have two different ones. I'll do two, three, two, three. So let me redo those real quick. Cool. So it should be. Step sequencing is so fun.
almost feels like a real piece of music. Almost. everything except for this so maybe this can be like <laughs> oh thanks so much d sherman thanks buddy appreciate it I don't have any more cowbell. <laughs> but I do want to make a better effect here. I have to do a lower number to go slower. Let's do like 12 and 32. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The myth, the legend. Genesis can't handle it. Everything but the volume is kind of jacked up. These are so goofy. Maybe I should just change the instruments of. That kind of helps.
So the only thing I'm going to do is change the volume of the crazy blast. We'll call that 7C, 7C, so it's not as loud. Well, cool fun. Cool, cool, cool and fun. I'm out of words. I'm out of brain power. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you guys for being a part of this today. This is a weird blast of the past using ancient software to make crazy old music. But man, 90s music is so much fun. So thank you guys for being a part of this today. If you have any clever titles for the, this track, I'd love to hear it. Uh, and with that, I'm going to wrap it up and let's play the final track out. I'm actually going to show you how to export it because exporting is just the same thing as playing it back. But it you, you can let it loop as many times as you want. And then I'm going to take the file, throw it into Audacity and, and do stuff. But you know what? I have a crazy idea. Can we handle any crazy ideas? I just, I don't know if, if we can handle any more crazy ideas. I'm going to try it. Are you ready for this? What is something that I can say vocally that's going to be part of the track? I'm going to make a little vocal sample. Maybe, come on. I said, I'm going to say, come on. You ready? So I'm going to open up Audacity, which is just a little vocal recorder. Come on. Come on. Come on. And then I'm going to bit crush the nonsense out of it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And yes, Matt, we need to talk. Come on. Come on. All right, so I'm going to export that as a wave. I'm just going to call it, come on. And then I'm going to open up my samples. We're going to load said sample. <laughs> you hear it? Go have my own sample. Come on. So stupid. Come on. So we're going to do this. Come on. Come on. This is in honor of D. Sherman. His kind donation. Come on. Come on. 
There we go. How's that, guys? Come on. Come on. Come on. I feel like we need over here. We've already activated the. I'm just gonna leave it with that. But there you go, I snuck in a little vocal recording. Come on. That's how you do it, with samples. So anyway, let's finish this sucker out and let's be done for the day. Thank you guys for being a part. I'm gonna play out the final track. So basically to export, I just go over here to export wave, choose where to put it, and then it just loops indefinitely until I want it to be done. So for our purposes, I like to loop things twice. And then on the third one, I just stop it and we'll fade out uh, 10 seconds of fade out and it'll be done so give me a name give me a track name for this guys um yeah you guys have a lovely afternoon i'll see you next time Bye bye So I just realized that's super anticlimactic and I forgot a very important toggle. So anticlimactic. I forgot to do, there's a function for looping. <laughs> Let me open up my Sarbanian. Just type in a little code at the bottom to loop. Now I'm really confused. Or maybe, let's, let's experiment, shall we? Because I'm just so out of touch with this. Let's see what happens when I open up to Audacity and throw in that track we just made. I think it's just a perfect loop, if I'm not mistaken. So you guys should be able to tell. Okay, cool, so it literally just, might as well show you now, huh? So boom, once I've exported, I can literally just copy it three times. And then on the third one, I like to go in here. So 14 seconds is the that loop. It's 10 seconds after the loop ends. So I literally just go in here and do a fade out for the last 10 seconds. Oh, I screwed that up real bad. Hold on. It's right there. Okay, there we go. So I'll take that part, that little chunk, fade that out twice. And then I'll put a two second silence at the end. Now we have our track.